Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Whiskey Wednesdays. My name is Daryl Lim and I'm your host. This week is the last in our Shelter Point series featuring the five whiskeys that I came back from Shelter Point with. Tonight we're going to do a live tasting, tasting each one of these five. And do let me know in the comments below which one is your favorite if you've had the opportunity to taste them. So tonight, starting from my left, on the far left here, we've got the single cask peat whiskey, followed by the smoke point whiskey, the artisanal single malt whiskey, their bestseller, the double barrel, and last but not least, the forbidden. Shelter Point does have quite a lineup of whiskeys, and if you haven't had a chance, don't forget to catch the last three episodes where we showcased the distillery uh, with an on-site tour of their facilities, including their visitor guest experience center, along with warehouse number one and warehouse number two. And for those of you who did watch, you will remember us tasting for the first time ever a whiskey that has been matured for less than three months in a 10-year-old ex Artbeck cask. So that was one of the highlights of my visit there. And I want to thank you again to Mark Kaczynski from the Barhaven Whiskey Brotherhood, who now resides there in on Vancouver Island, for inviting me and setting up the tour, along with the owner of Shelter Point Distillery, Patrick Evans, and the man himself, Jacob Weep, manager of the distillery, who very patiently answered all the questions and took both Mark and I around the distillery um, a couple of months back. And I hope you're still keeping with me so far. Now for our fourth tasting this evening for the Shelter Point lineup, we have the Double Barrel. This is a unique whiskey, and you can tell the boldness of that. Look at that deep brown, almost a leather brown color to it. And the reason for that richness is because this is the whiskey that is matured in both virgin oak followed by second use French oak. Hence, you can tell through that process, you have that flavor, so that color profile that is nice, dark, and rich. This is only 46% ABV, so in terms of strength, it is the same as the artisanal single malt. However, the flavor profile is going to make your palate explode. You're going to have, and you will taste that fruitiness to it, the blackberry casks. So the description reads almost like, you know, a fruit explosion that I would love. And I, when I tasted this whiskey, at first I thought it was going to be really bold because of its color. But instead, the flavorful and the flavor profile kind of jumped out at me. And this is, I'm, this is actually my second bottle of Double Barrel in less than six months. Um, this is the sixth release, and this is their gold medal winning Double Barrel Whiskey. It has been, it was finished for 99 days in Blackberry casts from Schultz Point's neighbors at Coastal Black Winery. Savor oak notes of vanilla, coconut, and gently smoked caramel wrapped up in a bouquet of berries and summer sweetness guaranteed to tent wise to taste buds. Well, it sounds rather uh, tropical and it sounds very fruity, but let's give it a taste and see what kind of flavor profile we detect. So again, you can tell from that whiskey, look at that deep brown color to it, not much of an oily texture, and comparing that with even the single cask, the shelter point, um, the, the smoke point, sorry, as well as the artisanal, this one here is the darkest of the five whiskeys that we're tasting this evening. Apart from the color, you're going to notice right away just holding that whiskey away, that whiff that you're going to get has that bold richness. There's a reason why it's double barreled. It's almost like it's double, double the richness, I like to call it, both from the virgin oak and then from the French oak. And that's the second use French oak. That description said blackberries. When I first smelled this, I said blackcurrant, which was perhaps a more bold version of blackberries.
that richness jumps out at you. A apart from the blackberries and black currant, I also I smell a bit of the marzipan, perhaps a smoked vanilla smoked marzipan in scent. There's a very sweet, uh, very rich and sweet uh, scent that comes out because I immediately sense that that almost sweetness gives me that headache. And I'm not a person who's used to eating sweet or drinking sweet. So whenever I smell the sweetness, it almost gives me that immediate sugar rush headaches. Mm. Remember, blackberries, that jumps out at you, the tropicalness. I almost taste the smoked tangerines, like blood orange flavors that come out of this whiskey. The sweetness is very pronounced, but it's not overtly sweet. It's, it's, it's not as sweet as an Oloroso sherry cask of whiskey, but it is, um, you can taste that fruitiness that jumps out at you. And the sweetness, yet the boldness from the double barrel oak, you can definitely notice right away. The other thing I'm noticing is that with that fruitiness, that tropical fruitiness, it, it almost feels like the citrusy uh, bite to your palate. I call it that tangy uh, taste and the flavor. It's not spicy, but it's tangy, kind of like dances off. It's almost like you're, you're yeah, sucking on a lime or a lemon and you have that, that almost shudder that you get. But it gives that beautiful flavor profile and like I said, it was a fruity explosion in your mouth. The black currant is very pronounced along with the, the oakiness. It doesn't come through as much, uh, but on the second tasting and the third tasting, you can definitely uh, sense that oak coming through on the whiskey. And like I said, I like to give it a second, third, fourth, fifth uh, chance to, to smell the scent once I've had a taste or two and then leave it out a little and then compare them to the other whiskeys. But on the scent, you can smell sort of a smoked leather oakiness to it. A very unique whiskey. And last but not least for our whiskey tasting this evening of our Shelter Point lineup, the fifth whiskey there, the Forbidden. When I first saw this in the store, when I was picking up whiskeys before coming back, I was like, what is the forbidden? Why is it so white? I read the description and I said, okay, you know what? I'm going to give it a shot. And I took it back. To be honest, it wasn't, it wasn't my favorite whiskey on my first tasting. It felt just a tad too light, like too floral. But it made for a great summer sipper. And as you can tell... That whiskey is almost all gone since August, and it was a bottle that I shared with my a number of my guests that were in my home for private whiskey tastings, and I'd say almost all of them loved it immensely. And um, in terms of the whiskey profile, this is a touch 1% higher than the previous two we have tasted, a 47% ABV. This whiskey is unique because it is 100% wheat whiskey. And that's typically a bit of a departure from what we're used to. For their description, the forbidden, meaning not allowed, banned. Their single malt wheat whiskey might just be forbidden by those in the know. It's named after a local mountain plateau where only the most adventurous souls dare go. Like I said, you can smell the summer inside this whiskey. Let's give it a taste today. For those of you who enjoy a very light, um, floral, fragrant whiskey, then hands down, this is the whiskey that you must have in your collection. And again, we're going to be using one of these cute little whiskeys. I'd say that this, you can tell from the color, that this is the lightest color, almost a golden 
yellow color uh, compared to all of my, in fact, all of the whiskeys in my collection, but definitely among the Shelter Point lineup, this is the lightest whiskey in color. <clears throat> when you talk about the floral scent, it is very evident when you're taking that first, second scent, that floral scent jumps right out at you. There's no peat, no smoke in this whiskey at all. Mm. So yes, I taste that, like you know, that floral taste, the flavor. But what I also notice is almost like a medicinal, herbal taste to it. Very interesting. And I mean, you know, whenever I use medicinal and herbal, people think like crazy Chinese medicines. But actually, a lot of Chinese herbs are derived from from plants. And so, when you're talking about medicinal herbal along with um, a plant, you know, flower-based floral scent and taste. That actually matches up on its profile quite, uh, quite spot on. In terms of oiliness, there's almost none at all. I'd say that this is uh, probably the least oily of the five whiskeys. If I can even use the term oily in there, there's almost no oil at all. It's very clear, a uh, very clear a fluid that you can tell, but also in terms of its taste, um, it, is, it is light, it dances off your lips, makes for a great summer sipper. And for those of you at 47%, if you're not careful, you'll be drinking this a little bit too fast, too often. Um, a great summer sipper, it makes you feel it's light, it doesn't sit heavy. Uh, compared to the other whiskeys that I'd, I'd probably say pairs better with a cigar or uh, great on a cold winter's night. This here is definitely a summer supper. It makes you feel light. You can nurse it in your hand, have a nice long evening chatting among friends while sipping away at a uh, forbidden. Very interesting name. And I've never had a 100% wheat whiskey. So this is a first for me. And it was a, a first that has turned out to be a rather um, uh, a good first taste of a wheat whiskey. No complaints there. Um, it's actually a whiskey, as I said, as I, the more I taste, um, the more convinced I am that I need to retain one. In fact, I was a little bit, a little bit disappointed uh, that I wasn't able to find this whiskey uh, on the Shelter Point website um, when I recently did a top up of my whiskey collection here at Shelter Point. And there we have it. Those are the five whiskeys from the Shelter Point distillery in our lineup this evening. The important thing about whiskey tasting is, I mentioned in a previous vi a video called Whiskey Appreciation, is that each of you, all of us, have bring, bring with us different cultural experiences, bring with us different life experiences that add to our ability to detect scents as well as detect flavors on our palate. So don't be afraid to add your comments below as well. If you disagreed with a profile that I was tasting, if you said, no, 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 I was, I was tasting spicy, I was tasting something that was more sweet. So go ahead and add your comments below and let us know if you had a dif different tasting or a flavor profile on e any of these five whiskeys. So remember how I said early on how you can go back and retaste and reset a smell all of your different whiskeys. This is a great opportunity to leave then all of these different, a little bit of a dram or a fluid left, perhaps calling it a nip, half a dram of fluid left in each of these glasses so you can go back and re-smell them and compare them one versus two versus three, four, and five and see which is your favorite and how they each have a different, perhaps nosing and flavor profile after they have been sampled slightly. And you'll be amazed and surprised at sometimes how those flavors and those scents evolve once you've only got half the dram available and once it's been exposed to the air a little bit longer. 
We have come to the end of this week's whiskey tasting review. Don't forget to like and share this video with your friends and fellow whiskey lovers. Thank you once again, everyone, for your support for my whiskey channel and for giving us the time to showcase Shelter Point Distillery on beautiful Vancouver Island. I had a, an amazing trip out there and I'm looking forward to returning to Shelter Point Distillery very soon in the near future. And we've come to the end of another episode of Whiskey Wednesdays. Stay tuned next week as we start a series showcasing my other distillery tour at Macaloni's Caledonian Distillery on beautiful Vancouver Island in Victoria, British Columbia. Until then, slancha. <laughs>